Hey YouTubers, uh, FireGuy1020 here. Just wanted to give a fall update to the channel. Uh, I know it's been some time since I've made a video and so I figured now would be a good time. Uh, I've started putting my cab on for the winter. Um, some of you probably noticed a big difference already in the cab from previous videos and you see the, the green doors on there and the other ones were yellow. Um, I got a, a deal and I'm, I'm, I'm still, I'm, I'm so shocked I got a deal on two hard doors for these X-Series cabs and the deal doesn't end there. I got an extra door for the right hand side for this cab, it's a new old stock and I got a soft side door that's new old stock. Uh, another right hand side door for a 2520 series, uh, I guess a 2000 series tractor. Both of those doors are new old stock. I picked these up at an auction for under $50 for all, what, five, four of them, excuse me. Um, I, I, I just, I called my dealer today just because I wanted to confirm uh, how good of a deal I did on the doors. I knew they were expensive to begin with, but I wasn't sure exactly how expensive. And he said they're $1,400 a piece. And good thing I was just sitting down at the time when I called him because I was in shock at how expensive these doors are. This door on the right hand side here I'm pretty sure is has never been on a tractor. Um, the only spot of rust on it that I can tell that makes me think it was is because there's some rust down here. I know the lighting kind of sucks, but it's so blessed windy outside. I mean, you can't really have the door open. So anyway, um, there's only a little bit of rust down here, and that's only because of this this weather stripping that they use on these doors it just it holds the moisture so anybody that has these cabs knows about the rust issue down here or anywhere where water is going to sit um personally my personal feeling on these cabs is uh the prep work that they put into the metal before it gets painted is not good at all um, it's very subpar. So like I had to, a while back I made a video on an update on the cab and all that and I had to have a whole new roof made. Um, the old roof that was on here had the, this, uh, I guess trim seal or whatever on here. And it, I'm not kidding, it was rotted, you know, halfway up the cab here. It was just, I mean, you could take it and just fold it over by hand. It was, it was awful. So. When I brought it to the steel shop, he's like, I can cut it out. But because the top was so rusted, he said he would much rather just make me a roof. So for $150, he made me a roof. And when I called the deer dealer, he said they wanted like $1,100 for the roof. And I'm like, oh, yeah, not going to happen. So um, I had intentions on building doors, I guess hard doors. For this this year but I never got around to it um, and I just happened to be watching an online auction site and just scrolling through the um, through the listings and uh, it's it's a local online auction site that uh, that we have in the area and um, I saw a thing for Curtis doors and I I knew right away I had at least one hard door for my cab. Um, they only had like three pictures on there. The one was of the 2520 door and then they had, I think, I believe it was this one, but either way. Um, so I knew I had a door that would fit my tractor at least, uh, at least the one side and I could, I could bring it into the steel shop and they could mimic it and then I would just have to buy the glass and it would be well under the $1,400 price range. Um, you now granted the glass and all that would have been the expensive part, but either way, you know, 
But anyway, um, again, I got these doors for a screaming deal. I mean, like I said, under 50 bucks for four of them. Um, I currently have the other two on Craig or on eBay right now. I just I can't believe nobody's just bidding on them just just to have them. But I only have one door each. It's not like it's a pair or anything, so it's going to be kind of hard. To, it's a harder item to sell. So I mean, I get it too. But either way, um, like I said, super nice. They open, they close. This one doesn't open all the way because I got my bagger and all that on. Um, I got kind of anxious seeing the doors just sitting in my garage, so I. And I still have to mow because it's still leaf season and stuff, but I thought, you know, I'm just going to put the cab on. So they open nice. The only thing I don't have is the uh, the gas shock mount. I guess, you know, to stop them, you know, open them only to that far. But that doesn't matter to me. Um, this door is by far in worse shape, especially down here. There is a through rust hole that I can stick my finger in. Um, you know, I mean, you can see me bending this that piece there so in the springtime I'm gonna have the steel shop right that I have do all my stuff I'm gonna have them cut that out and put a new piece in for me just so that and then you know obviously I'm gonna take all the glass out and you know have it painted and, and whatnot you know at least have it blasted and I'll take care of you know doing the paint work on it but uh, anyway um, another little thing that I got going on right now is with these soft-sided cabs, when you get them from Curtis, the windshield um, doesn't go all the way down like the hard-sided cab does. And I guess I could never figure out why Curtis wouldn't just make one windshield for these things. Um, it just seems like it would have been easier, you know, just to make one windshield and they're all interchangeable and so on and so forth, but I get it at the same time for the guys that have uh, the 45 loaders for these things because you can't mount the 45 loader on a tractor with a cab on it with a hard sided cab. You can with a soft sided cab, it can be done. The, rot, the uprights for the loader do not hit the windshield. They will hit the windshield if you have the, the full windshield on here. I don't have a loader so that's not a problem for me. I've been looking for a... a hard side or a, I guess a full windshield um, but I just I haven't found one I mean it's kind of like looking for a needle in a haystack to be honest with you but uh, the dilemma I was having with it is I have a piece of plexiglass that goes across here that some of you have seen in the videos and that's because I don't have the canvas material that goes here so I cut out a section of plexiglass that would fit the contour of this and I um, got like a flap seal so it seals super nice around you know this and everything you don't get the snow blowing in on the dash and whatnot and that it worked all well and great the only issue is is it took forever to and i guess i say forever not horribly long but it took a little bit because you had to unbolt it um from here on each side and then there was another spot you had to unbolt it from to take it out and that was just so you could open the hood on these tractors um on the hard side of windshield, you have, you flip the whole windshield up and then you can open it. On this, you have to take those little curtain things off and then you can open the windshield, um, or uh, open the hood, rather. So my issue was is I, it took forever just to check like the fluids and whatnot in here. Um, you know, and if there was an issue that you may have had, Again, it's going to take a minute to get the windshield off just to get the hood open. So um, I came up with a pretty good idea for for the um, for the fix. Um, what I did is when I put the cab on, I I knew this year I said I'm not going to put that whole section of plexiglass in and not have it at least be hinged or something. Sorry, a little interruption. Um, I knew I wasn't going to have it at least hinge or open to some effect. I, I needed it to open, and I wanted it to open without the use of tools, and I wanted it to be fast and you know really kind of super user friendly. So what I came up with is putting a hinge here, 
piano hinging from you know that point there to here and another small little hinge just because this section of plexiglass is only like a little eighth inch plexiglass so it's pretty flimsy um, hinging that upward and using um, what they call a swell latch and it's basically it's a rubber grommet with a bolt on it and when you open it the rubber is released and it goes back to its original form when you close it it pulls the rubber closed and it actually makes that rubber area um, larger so say for instance that piece of plexiglass closes over that hole that swell latch will go inside there I close it and it will latch the rubber will fill the back side of that hole so I can't physically open the windshield or open that lower section um, I was running into an issue still with it because of the design of the hood you need I think there's like an inch or two of clearance um, between the hood and the bottom of the windshield that's not a lot of clearance and you need the height the length of this section here has to open up and I guess it's kind of hard to explain one-handed you know using my phone here but anyway what I did is this windshield hasn't been opened in quite some time it was you know the old cab was neglected and so on and so forth so I greased the hinges up top got them working properly greased these little latches in here that the uh, you know the windshield can swing open on and what you're gonna have to do is is pinch these two little tabs in here swing the windshield out just enough because it's still the windshield wiper is it will hit the will hit the roof unfortunately I mean it can't go up super high and even with the windshield wiper down it still hits so Either way, um, I'm trying to come up with a method to keep the windshield open. Um, you know, I put a stick in there and whatnot, you know, just try to keep it up. But anyway, when this flips up, I can undo that swell latch on each side. I'm going to have one. So flip up, flip up, and I'll be able to flip that windshield up, and then I can open the hood. It would be a super fast, super simple idea, I think. Um, it should work out well. So I'm just waiting to uh, for the plexiglass to come in. I ordered some Lexan stuff. The other stuff I got was just a cheap plexiglass, like the acrylic. So, I mean, you can cut it and drill it and everything, but it, it likes to crack pretty easily. So I don't, I'm kind of getting over using that stuff. The, the, uh, the Lexan stuff is where it's at, so. But anyway, um, number three, I guess. Uh, big change for the for the cab this year is this piece here is from I have two cabs is for the other cab but I wanted just to visualize this for you so deer has this huge gap here be on the left hand side of the tractor you notice where the heater ports are and whatnot well anyway they had this huge open void here in these cabs and I mean it's it's sealed off because it's got the like the the radiator shroud cover and whatnot, but you still get a lot of airflow in here, cold air, and unless you have all the the covers for these cabs and everything, I don't. Um, the cab has is very drafty, you know, and the heater doesn't like to keep up and whatnot because there's just so much cold air flowing in and not enough hot air coming out and so on and so forth. So um, I got the cardboard out. Again, when I did the, the lower windshield section here, I got the cardboard out, and... Um, taped it to the back side here and I just took a utility knife and just kind of scored it you know about a half inch or so away from the the hood and came up with a design you know like a shape I guess that I liked and um, did the same thing on the other side because there was a couple spots you know that needed to get filled in so that they would match and they would look they would look right um, and I brought those to the my sheet metal guys and they're in the process now of you know forming them you know cutting the pieces and bending them and welding them to the to the other um i guess these little front sections that i have so that would be nice it's going to close everything in on the front super nice um you know i can take some foam seal and you know pack it around here just to seal everything up real good and uh yeah so that's so that'll be cool um i think deer left this side open for the guys that get the um, the cable spout 
control for their snow throwers and stuff. I, I think that's the reason, but I, I don't know. That's just what I've heard. Um, I guess the idea is there, but you know, I don't have I, I don't have that. So I'm I'm gonna put the the electric spout on. That, I guess the the linear the linear actuator. Excuse me. Um, so yeah, I have that mod to do yet for the blower. But anyway. So that's that. Um, number four is I got back windows put in the cab over the summer, I guess, well, late, late summer, um, super early fall. Uh, this is quarter inch um, Lexon plexiglass that I bought. I bought this stuff off eBay. Um, I bought the, the weather stripping off a uh, company called Zorro.com. It's similar to a Granger Products type place. Um, they had this stuff. I forget how much I got. I think I got 25 feet for 50 bucks or something like that, I think. I don't remember now exactly. But anyway, it fits. I believe this is 18 gauge sheet metal. Um, you know, this little lip here fits 18 gauge and then the uh, the Lexan is quarter inch, so it's just like a glass window, and um, the same is you know the same. I guess this seal is the same for a window. You know what I mean? This is I just I'm, I didn't put the glass in it, so um, it's kind of easy product to work with. It's a learning curve. I've never done it before. It's I, I thought it was I thought it went fairly simple. Um, I wouldn't attempt it with glass because I would, I would be afraid I'd break the glass. The stuff was kind of bending and twisting and whatnot. So, um, yeah, so, but anyway, I, follow, I called the glass company, you know, just got a price on it and stuff. I gave them some rough measurements and whatnot. And um, I, I told myself I wasn't gonna pay that price and uh, I figured I could get the product myself and, you know, use plexiglass. And, you know, when the plexiglass gets scratched or, yellows out or whatever um you know i can i can replace it so because i think i got a i think it was a four by two sheet of quarter inch lexon plexiglass i think something like that for like 60 bucks or something so but anyway um you know three inch arc here three inch arc all the way around on all four corners and um you know, pack to the weather seal in there. Um, I got a little crazy kind of cutting it and cause it's, it's cut a little short there, but that's, that's fine. Um, I watched a bunch of videos on YouTube and I mean, there was guys overlapping the stuff by a half inch and they were packing it in there and you know, cause the seal will shrink over time, but you know, this, it, it's not a car or anything like that. And that little bit right there isn't going to bother me. Sorry about that. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I did that, drilled and tapped some holes. There's a bolt underneath here, and there's a bolt underneath there. You know, I got one there, one there. Drilled and tapped those holes, stainless steel hardware. Um, the holes in the green part here, I just drilled like half inch holes, just so you get some play, you know, kind of all around. Um, so you can get all the holes to line up. I mean, they, they line up perfectly in the center, but um, you know, I guess I'd rather have some movement with it this way and that way. So, and then I did the same thing on the bottom here. It's kind of hard to see because I have the bagger on right now. But anyway, um, you know, the window's a little bit smaller and whatnot. And I just dropped off the brat, I guess the template for the side window bracket. Um, when I did the side, when I did the front little guard things there. And I don't know if I have the template or not anymore. Yes, I do. Bear with me a sec. So I just took a piece of wire rod. And this is going to be kind of hard to see a little bit. But anyway, um, the idea is, is this wire rod represents the shape of the steel. And what I'll end up doing is either bolting the side window to this bolt here, and then there's two more up top, maybe adding one here in the middle, um, you know, replacing these upper two bolts with longer ones or something, 
or you know drilling and tapping holes you know three holes there and then um, same thing you know drill and tap drill and tap cut around for the hinge you know drill and tap there and I got a window you know I'm gonna cut another piece of plexiglass to fit there same thing on the other side and that will completely enclose the cab this year it's the first year this cab has is going to be completely enclosed um, and hopefully hopefully my fingers are crossed um, you know I can uh, you know do this without putting you know, like my car cover all on and and whatnot and ski mask and and so on and so forth and, and freezing my butt off because I, I I'm sick of it you know I really am I have a cab and everybody's like oh yeah it must be nice to have a cab but it's not so nice because it's still colder and you know all crap outside I mean I might as well just be outside shoveling so but anyway um yeah oh and I also bought a uh a tuck away heater um the tuck away heater that I bought is it's for a, a Kubota RTV 900 series um, so it actually the tractor mounted our uh, tuckaway heaters mount in that fashion there um, this one has to mount opposite of that so you got the bigger side on the bottom and the smaller side on the top which I mean really to me I guess it doesn't really matter um, the only issue I have right now is I gotta fill in this huge hole on the bottom, and I think I'm just gonna get like a push penny or something like that to go in there, a little RTV sealant or something just to kind of seal it up, and I can put that uh, that vent cover back on. Um, pick this up, uh, pick this up off eBay for 150 bucks, 175 bucks, brand new in the box. Um, yeah. I, uh, I think I did fairly well on it. Um, it should work well. I mean, everything's all the same. I mean, I, I can't see any reason why this wouldn't work. Um, you know, anything different that I have noticed personally, I took this thing apart um, when it came from Curtis. Uh, there was a nice unpainted, I mean, it had like overspray on it, but like right through here where it just, when they painted it at the factory, just they just never painted it. So. Um, I took the whole thing apart, uh, minus the pop rivets and whatnot, you know, and I just took some like flat black or matte black um, rattle can paint and I just I painted the whole thing and put it all back together and everything. And while I had it all apart, I just kind of went over some photos online and everything matches the same as far as, you know, the one for the 585, I guess, and the one that's not for, I guess, the one that's for the RTV 900. So. Everything, like I said, everything appears the same. All the mounting holes are the same. I, 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 it, it should work out great. So um, I also got uh, plastic quick couplers for the heater hoses this year. First year I've had those, so hopefully I'm not going to make a mess with my coolant everywhere every time I put the heater in and take it out. You know, which is only you know once in the spring and once in the or uh, once in the fall and then take it out in the spring. Um, the only thing is with these is if you want to keep coolant in, you got to couple these together um, because there's no baffling system inside here. So like once you say, you know, my finger's a hose and you put the hose in here, you're going to get fluid to flow through. But if you want to take that hose out, all the fluid that's in this hose is just going to come right out. So that's the only downfall. Um, I wish I kind of knew what I knew that before I ordered these things, but... I think I did all right on the price. I think I bought, what did I buy? Two, three, four sets. I guess or four pairs like this um, for like 50 bucks or something like that. So I didn't do too bad on them. Um, you know, I figured that for $50 they'll have to work. So in, in, in there, they're, they are heater rated. Um, you know, they're not not rated for heat which is which is nice so there's other there's other guys out there that are that are doing what i did here um with these actual couplers so uh yeah it'll work out great but uh anyway um yeah i uh said just wanted to give a channel update um you know it's fall 
I'm gonna get some more snow blowing videos up. Um, thinking of getting a GoPro around Thanksgiving time and um, trying to get some different shots using the GoPro. You're using a GoPro rather on the snowblower, like on the shoot and whatnot, you know, trying to get some different shots. I don't know, maybe uh, just some different ideas I'm playing around with. Um, you know, I don't, I don't edit my videos. I just, I throw them up and I call it good, you know, um, but I've been looking at trying to do some, you know, maybe getting into a little bit of editing and stuff like that, you know, moving different shots and whatnot. Maybe, I don't know. I'm just playing around with ideas right now, but, uh, Anyway, um, yeah, if you like the video, comment, rate, subscribe, whatever. And, uh, yeah, I'll have another video up once I get, uh, you know, these front sections back and I get the windshield and all that done and the sides all done and whatnot. Um, you know, hopefully by then I'll have the blower on and whatnot. But anyway, um, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next one.